Well, here we are then for some more F1 My Team, and today we are here for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. Now, as always, if you did not see the previous episode, guys. Hold on. Oh, no, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. No, 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 no. Oh my god, what are we gonna do, man? Oh god, I literally said this in the teammate vote video where I literally said I hope Fernando doesn't retire. And he's the first one to retire in my career mode. How has this happened? Anyway. We're going to have to think of a replacement and we'll, you know, get down to that in due course. But this weekend, we're here at Zanville and it's mad because if I told you, if you look at the video title, the video title right now is not even in reference to this bombshell that's just happened. There's something else that happens in this that's even bigger. So I do urge you stay tuned to watch what happens. But anyway, let's jump into the weekend so as you can see in the background we do have the confirmed upgrades which for this weekend is a chassis one for the weight redistribution we look at the progress chart and we're kind of just lounging and just chilling in that lower midfield part right now as we struggle to kind of keep up with our teams around us having said that we do have two major upgrades on the way one for the error one for the chassis and one more minor aer aerodynamic one as well so there are big improvements on the way and if they all arrive we're going to be looking pretty decent now, this weekend, the weather forecast says we have rain, uh, potentially in qualifying and also at the end of the race. So keep your eyes peeled for that one, uh, which could potentially spice up the racing. And it could actually give us a bit of an opportunity in terms of strategy to try something different here today. But here we are then at Zanville and practice did not get off to the best start. I struggled a bit with the grip with the car and um, yeah, generally speaking, I enjoyed Zanville, but in this year's game, as you guys have mentioned to me in the comments, the AI are super, super fast through the fast right-hander in Sector 2. So, um, yeah, after practice, we hit all of our practice program goals, basically. And we're now going to move into Qualifying 1, which I'm very much looking forward to. Like I mentioned, I enjoy this track. So I want to try and see if I can get into Q2 and hook up a nice, clean lap. So here we go then, jumping into the action. And to be fair, for a, a banker lap, this was actually a really good lap. But then through the hairpin, I just get on that inside curb and I completely lose all balance in the car if you saw the last episode at spa which i'll leave linked in the top right uh, we just you know got on the curb as well in that race and we ended up crashing out of the race you know with terminal damage just because we got on that inside curb lost the balance and i ended up hitting the wall so you know i had brief flashbacks there to the last race but in this qualifying i was able to hook up a very very strong lap and it's this one right here let's see if it's enough to move us into q2 because i was very happy with this lap We've only got two laps of fuel left. There we go, across the line, and it's not going to be enough. It's only P17 for now. Okay, but having said session, that, the, the lap felt good. I was very satisfied with it. And realistically, I don't really know if there was much more pace in it. I definitely wouldn't have got through into Q2, you know, half a second away. I didn't have that kind of pace in the car. Uh, Lungard actually out-qualifies us, which is fair enough. GG to him. And we're going to start tomorrow's race from P20. So it seems like... The AI are pretty strong here. I am losing about half a second to six tenths through the fast downhill right, just as sector two starts. So if you take that off off the table and say one to two tenths, then 
in that sense, we're looking at probably getting into Q2. But yeah, realistically, we just don't have the pace right now. So we'll try and fight back in the race. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. Zandvoort circuit then, 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left, with plenty of steep camber and elevation changes to keep our drivers on their toes throughout the 2.6 mile lap and watch out for cars making use of the DRS zone into turn one to try and overtake. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here today, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Norris, Charles Leclerc and Verstappen, Sainz, Perez, Fernando Alonso and Pierre Gasly, Vettel, Stroll, Esteban Ocon and Sonoda. Giovinazzi, Lundgaard, Nikita Mazepin, and George Russell, Martinez, Latifi, Mick Schumacher, and Kimi Raikkonen finishes off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Well, here we are on the grid then, and I'm not gonna lie, I am not looking forward to this race. I've heard a lot of comments, I've seen a lot of comments, and people telling me that the fast right-hander in sector one, right before sector two starts, the AI are very fast through there. So similar to Belgium and Silverstone, I'm expecting to struggle at this track. So I'm not looking forward to it from that point of view. But in terms of the race strategy, we do have some rain on the way in the second part of the race. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to flip the strategy we have right now. I'm going to start the mediums and then move to the softs if necessary later on fuel wise i'm going to run just point one so just a little bit um over and in general i'm going to try and do my best but i am expecting things to be pretty difficult around here so let's see if we can find anything i'm going to keep the expectations pretty low and i'm just going to see if i can try and finish higher than where i start okay let's see how this goes the lights are on let's try and get a nice clean start Lights out, away we go. It's a good start. We managed to get ahead of one of the Williams, but another one fights back. Oh my god, they both absolutely lunge up the inside. As we're three wide here, I'm trying to find a bit of space. I'm just going to edge ahead of uh, Latifi here as we go into the tricky kind of tight section here. Contact between Russell and Giovinazzi. I'm going to try and get the inside line. Looks like everyone's on the hard tyre, which is good. So we're going to have a bit of an advantage early on but here we go through the first on the first lap for the first time through this right hander and it looks like yeah the AI do have a bit of an edge through there Mazepin struggling with a bit of understeer you can see in the Haas I can see up ahead though it looks like everyone is in the hard tire from what I can tell so I need to try and be aggressive at this first part of the race and really try and use these tires let's see if I can get Nikita Mazepin here first and foremost down towards the heavy brake zone I think He's going to be quite easy to pass. I think we're going to have a lot more grip, especially in this initial phase of the race. Let's see if the AI is still slow through the banking, and I can just use my ERS to try and get the run. Oh, yeah, they're still slow. Very, very slow. Going to cut back underneath Massive Pin here. I've still got plenty of battery to use, so we're not going to run out. And we're going to move up into P17, into turn one, inside line, job done. Looks like Lungard's running in P14, so good start from Lungard there. Good to see. Let's try and get Giovinazzi if we can. 
Oh, it's a nice run through there, but looks like they are do drain their battery through here. Let's see if we can get Giovinazzi here. Same move as we've done with Mazepin through the banking. Just close up the gap. Now we'll drain the ERS on the pit straight as DRS will not get enabled. DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. There we go. Job done on Giovinazzi. Bit of contact as Gio tried to jink to the right a little bit to block me off, but didn't work. Also, Lungard is on soft tyres. Interesting. That explains why he's been pretty good in his start. Pretty aggressive. Back-to-back -back personal bests right now as we have better pace than all three of these cars ahead of us. I'll see if I can try and pass them. I think, obviously, the best spot is going to be that final corner. That seems to be working really well for us. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for. I'm trying to save a bit of ERS because... It's quite hard to save around here. I wonder if I'm close enough here for a move on stroll. We're going to keep the ERS on. I think we're a bit too far back. Or not, never mind. Oh my god, what a move. Yes, mate. I think it was clean. I didn't feel anything in my full feedback. So that was a lunge and a half, but we made it work. And we're ahead of Lance Stroll. Awesome. I think I can get Lungard here. Yep, here we go. Our own teammate. Just going to force him to the inside. So now that has no DRS right now. Going to break super late. Go to the outside of turn one. Lovely move. Textbook. And we're through. And ahead. Now we've just got to try and get Sonoda here. Medium tire working well. If we can get this tire straight to the Inters. We're looking pretty decent this race. Oh, Sonoda having a bit of a moment there on the back end and you know what's coming now just got to keep it clean and we can pass him here I don't really think I need any ERS realistically I think we can do this one with just pure DRS if I need to I will just dab it a little bit but here we go we've got the run on him we're going to go to the outside so I'm going to go super defensive but look at the grip we have and we're through up into 13th place now if all those guys on softs hit we're going to be well in the points we've done all the hard work Race pace looks pretty strong, so let's try and push here. Use the ERS a little bit and try and drop Sonoda here if we can. Okay, there we go. Took me a couple of laps, but we've managed to drop Sonoda out of DRS range. We set a new personal best in the process. Hopefully Lungard can give me some issues and just keep him busy for a couple more laps. I'm going to try and keep this going. We don't really have the pace now though to catch the cars ahead, so we're just kind of floating in P13. And this is where we're relying on the people on the softs to pit and maybe open up a few strategy options. Pierre Gasly in the pit lane for Alpha Tauri. So we're going to gain a place from that. Meanwhile, Stroll has overtaken Lungard, who I believe may have pit on the previous lap. I'm not 100% sure. Got a few cars in the pit lane. Looks like the boxing for Haas, and that's going to promote us into the pit, into the top 10. Christian is in the pits. Christian in the pits. And we've got a yellow at the end of the lap. That's Perez. As we rejoin behind Verstappen here. Will there be a VSC or a safety car? If there is a VSC, we've got a great free pit stop here. It's Russell, so not a Red Bull, my bad. Don't think we're getting a safety car or a virtual, and being stuck behind the snap in there on cold tyres has meant Sonoda's got back within. Be aware, we expect the grip levels to start falling away soon. Yeah, tyres are starting to go, I can feel it. Tyres are letting go. But Sonoda now back within the RS range, so a bit of a shame. We've got one more car in the pit lane, that's one of the Ferraris, Carlos Sainz. Then we're going to get stuck behind another car here on cold tyres, or can we just edge ahead of Sainz? Just we can. Just get in front of him. Obviously, he'll pass me ASAP, but rather than get stuck behind on someone with cold tyres, we can just keep doing our thing. Oh my god, the car's went for the move there. That spooked me a little bit. I'm offline onto that kerb, which is not what I want. Just trying to keep him behind for as long as I can. Still no word in this rain. No rain expected. No rain expected for the time being. Dry seem like the best tyre for now. Hmm. It's not looking great right now. I would have hoped for a bit of a bit of a comment in regards to the rain, but nothing so far. Meanwhile, here comes Sainz. Then he's going to pass us quite easily. I'm not even going to fight this one, to be honest. We'll just let him crack on with it. Let him have the outside line. He can just take the usual racing line into turn one. There we go. Just keep doing our race. Here comes Lando. Again, not really going to fight this one too hard, but he's not as close as Carlos. But here he comes anyways. 
just let him get on with it. We're running a different race. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. Only thing is, <laughs> these tyres won't go past lap 21 in principle, so we need that rain to hurry up, please. I will say this is quite manageable right now. Two personal best sectors, so the last one has let me down a little bit. But I feel okay. Tyre is actually okay as well. 48% of the left front. Doing a good job this race of managing my tyres. And we're P11, so if I can stretch this and not let no one behind me through, we're all going to go into the softs later, so... We're all going to get a chance to fire back at these guys ahead of us, so let's see what happens. And if someone does return on the top 10, it's points. So I'm going to try and stay optimistic. Ocon in the pit lane for Alpine, so we're going to move back into the top 10. We're boxing this lap. Give us the best in lap you can. That's a bit wide. So we're going to pit this lap. I'm going to go for the softs. I'm, I'm not going to hang out until the rain. I've heard nothing about the rain. And the weather shows no signs of doing any changes. Tire wear's okay. I'll last before I pit. Rain is forecast in just over 10 minutes time. Rain in 10 minutes. Dry seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. There's no way. There's no way we're going to make that. My left front is just about on 60%. 59. So, yeah, soft tyres for us. Let's just send it on these. Release, release. 2.8, bit of a slow stop. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. But yeah, let's just drive flat out on these tyres and see what we can do. If we can hold track position ahead of the guys that we were already ahead of, then that's fine. Then we should be back in P11 and then everyone pits for the Inters and there's going to be more strategy at play again. So let's just see what happens. So first lap on softs, it's a personal best. 1 minute 10, 3, purple sector 3. I think we're decent right now, let's try and keep this pace up. Still no word on the rain. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Hmm. Still sounds like it's a while away, so that's fine by me. It means everyone on hard tyres is going to have to pit. Ooh, okay, so they're pitting already. A few cars in there. Let's see how much we've gained by pitting a few laps earlier. Let's see. What is the actual net gap once they rejoin the track? Sonoda's actually got ahead of Stroll. Or the other way around, sorry. Um, Stroll's overtaken Sonoda. But there we go. There's the gap. So four seconds. We've got a bit of breathing room now. Stroll's going very fast. He literally gains half a second through the right hander there on me, so more than that actually. <laughs> it's more like eight tenths. So yeah, Stroll's going to be in the back of us very soon. But yeah, of course, can go flat out if they don't have zero issues with tyre overheating. So that's very fair. Look at that gap, 1.2. That's how much we lost in that middle part of that. That's insane. Pierre Gasly in the pit lane. And Alonso still yet to pit for Alpine. So we should be... Back to P11 once this is all said and done. Where is this rain, man? I want this rain. Please help me out. Stroll's going to try and pass here. The Aston Martin at full power is actually ridiculous how fast it is. Going to keep it down to the apex. There we go. Gas now closing up as well. Five minutes until rainfall expected. Five minutes until rain dries seem like the best tyre for now. That's a long way to go, man. Five minutes around here. It's literally a minute a lap. That's five laps. We're expecting some rain soon. Expect the first drops in the next few minutes. Okay, fair enough. But still no clouds. Still nice and sunny, so the weather's going to change pretty quickly, I think. Oh, we've got a yellow in the first sector. This is what I mean. If we're in striking distance, we can pick up some pieces here. I thought Alonso had to pit, but he doesn't. So it seems like he's already done his stop. So that would give us P11. It's kind of signs. For Ferrari, I'm going to be in trouble here. Stroll might actually get me. I'm going to have to... Use my ERS to stay ahead. Here comes Stroll. Keep my car in the middle of the track. That does the trick. And now we're going to pass signs in the Ferrari for P11 in this race. Caution. Caution. I just need a bit of luck, man. We can get a point today. A bit more luck, please. Someone. Okay, all of a sudden it's just got very overcast. We're not too far off getting lapped either. Got Mercedes just a couple of... Literally about five to six seconds behind so um let's see what happens then with all this rain have a part to play in this race and it's already raining there we go let's see how quick it takes for the track to turn and do we pit or do we stay out the grip is getting pretty bad you know what i think i might take a chance here 
Pitting this lap then, come into the pits at the end of this lap. I'm not going to score points as it is, so I'm going to take a massive gamble here and just send it on the inter and see what happens. You never know. There's not really many laps left, but I'm hoping the track gets really bad. Exit, exit now. Let's see if the gamble pays off. I am currently a lap down, and there we go, DRS disabled. This could be a great call. This is a great call. Christian is coming in for his stop. This could be a massive, massive decision here. Will the AI go to the end on dries? Oh boy, here we go. We're about to find out. Can we unlap ourselves from Hamilton? We need to catch Bottas, who's further up the road, first and foremost. Let's try and get past Lewis first here. Let's see what kind of grip the AI have now in these conditions through here. DRS has been disabled by the stewards. DRS will be offline. There we go, we get past Lewis. Mate, what a call. The rain has just completely just come down. Yellow flag in sector two. Sebastian Vettel was off the track, I think. He's had a spin at the fast right hander. There is Bottas. Been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. Oh boy. Stay with me, folks. The AI are going long. They're not pitting for inters. This could be a grandstand finish. This is now the last lap of the race for Bottas, I believe. So it's crucial that we unlapped ourselves there at that time. Here we go then. Sonoda and Raikkonen and battling right now for position. Don't want to get involved in this. We're just going to use the grip. Go on the outside. We can score points. Ocon's out as well. The AI are crashing through the fast right-hander. Here is um, Straw and Gasly. We've caught them up already. Look how quickly... We've caught them, we're going to have to hold off here. Okay, it's on green now. Okay, clear. Oh my god, Gasly's out of shape. Oh boy. Yes, come on. We can get points today. We can get points. We're P9 as it is right now. Sonoda's crashed as well. Oh my god, what is happening in this race? Giovinazzi's crashed as well. Oh my god, oh my god. And we can get more than just P9. We're in the points as it is. I think Verstappen's a bit too far, but Alonso... We can chase him down, mate, I think. He's definitely overtakeable. If that's even a word, let's stay on board here. I think we'll be on to Alonso in about 10 seconds time. Hopefully that turn three. So Bottas gets the win. He survives. Here we are, we're reading in Alonso rapidly. It's a shame, one more lap and I could have maybe got Verstappen as well. Verstappen's a bit far away at the moment. Using all my ERS to try and maximize the pace. But what a return to the points. This would be an inspired decision on strategy. Could give us some big points if there. Alonso runs wide. Thank you very much, mate. And we are through. What a race. Absolutely unbelievable. Verstappen and Norris are just going to the final corner now, so we can't catch them anymore. But still, what a call. And that... Less than a lap oh. of fuel now. The tank is empty. I don't even care, Jeff. This is going to give us some much-needed points and a big, big boost. And that's what happens when you keep fighting. We didn't give up the race of the season in just two laps. Here we go. Final corner now. And we're going to finish the race in eighth place. Lungard also went for Inters. I'm not sure it's as close to catch though, which is a bit of a shame. But here we go across the line. And it's going to be points. And we're back in it. Yes. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, you know what they say, to finish first, first you have to finish. And that fact was clear today with lots of retirements having a big effect on the outcome of the race. As a driver, you tend to keep reliability concerns to the back of your mind and just focus on what's in front of you. But for the teams, races like this can be very stressful. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again.
Oh man, we fought so hard that race and we got our just rewards. What a decision. I can't believe I timed it that well. I took a chance, it paid off and my god, what a race. We fought so hard. The strategy was on point. Um, avoiding the hard tyre which has cost us in recent races was the way to go. Uh, we went much more aggressive on the compound, kept the pace, kept the traffic behind us for when you know things got a bit wild and yeah, overall... A really really strong race Bottas though picks up with the win for Mercedes-Benz Hamilton P2 Charles Leclerc on the podium in P3 for Ferrari ahead of Daniel Ricciardo who gets the fastest lap Perez P5 ahead of Norris Verstappen refinishing eighth place and back in the points for the first time in a long time ahead of Alonso and Lance Stroll and then missing out on the top 10 we have Gasly, Raikkonen, Lungard, Mazepin, Latifi, Schumacher, Ocon, Sonoda, Giovinazzi, Vettel, Sainz and Russell but mate things ticked off there right at the end and one two three four five six retirements in this race and Lungard very unlucky actually he got lapped and that's why he couldn't fight back on the inter had he not been lapped he probably would have finished p11 p10 he could have gone to the point so it's a real shame but that's the crucial element of f1 and the small differences and how we was able to actually you know come back from a lap down and manage to unlap ourselves from Bottas on the pit straight that was really really important um, in terms of the driver standings after that race we remain in 13th place but we gain a couple more points and just pull away slightly from Esteban Ocon and Bottas leads the way by 11 points over his teammate in the constructors we remain in 8th place but we do cut the gap to Alpha Carry by a couple of points so not all doom and gloom and a big big positive result here today but anyway that's it for the race. We're now going to move into upgrades. Well, after that race, we even then only just managed to tie it with Lance Stroll in terms of points. I think this rivalry is pretty much dusted. I don't think we're going to be able to turn this one around. Having said that, in regards to a claim, we go up to level 7 now and we have a 14% multiplier. And as a team, I believe we're going to rank up to level 11, which is awesome. So good progress being made there. And finally, in terms of cash, uh, first and foremost, of course, a full payout from the sponsors because we scored points. So Lupo Industries actually give us a full payout. A bit of damage there in terms of deductions, but overall, it's a full sponsor payout. And um, our total now is six and a half, pretty much a million dollars, which is absolutely insane. Well, so we've got quite a few things to get through. And to be fair, this episode has been pretty stacked. So I think I'm going to leave most of this until the next episode what i will do though is um just prepare a few things so first and foremost we're going to go to the messages tab um, nothing relevant here activities wise we've only got a couple of days so realistically i'll go for a marketing strategy conference to improve team acclaim um, outside of that though we have to renew the contract of christian lungard now before we have a proper look at that i think we'll do that in the next episode we're going to look at some R&D. Now, I did notice one of the upgrades did fail and it's the redesigned brake ducts. So we're going to go ahead and repurchase those. So let's get those back on the car. 0% failure chance on those. Um, elsewhere, though, if we have a bit of a look, uh, we've got the DRS act act activation um, upgrade, which is pretty cheap, actually. 29% discount. I am tempted to actually go for that, in fairness. So I think we might try and get that on, but the partner capacity has been reached. So what about on the chassis we've got the engine cover can we get anything else here we've got the heat dispersing wheel rims can't afford those right now uh, what about on the engine can we get anything here no we can't so maybe this is durability work possibly yeah definitely look at this control electronics we need this this is so so important in terms of you know there's the one engine part that we're really struggling with so we're going to get that on asap and then we'll try and get this one on as well once this one arrives elsewhere we could maybe buy something but i'm going to save some points just in case we have any other failures now teammate is an interesting one so now here's the thing we've got a, a decent amount of money to burn we can actually afford a half decent driver now i can't lie master and Coulthard have my attention because they're pretty affordable I had my own Alonso, but he's now confirmed his retirement. We actually got enough money to actually buy him, which is a real shame. Um, I don't think we can buy him out of a contract. Um, looking elsewhere, though, I think some other F2 driver could be an option. I wouldn't mind Robert Schwartzman. That would be very, very tasty. I can't lie. Um, but hmm, I don't know. It's kind of tricky, to be honest. It's a tricky one. I think overall, 
I'm going to give Lungard until the end of the season. I'm going to be real. But until then, we'll see how he performs. So we'll pick this up in the next episode. We'll try and renegotiate Lungard's contract. And also, we'll go ahead and do some facility upgrades as well. So for now, guys, I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully, you enjoyed today's episode. We'll leave it on a bit of a cliffhanger for the next one. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Subscribe for more daily F1 content on my channel. And as always, check out the two videos on the screen right now if you have missed them. But that is it from me here today. And I'll see you guys next time.